Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, looking like Grandma Moses. Okay, listen, the song comes to my mind. I'm not singing a solo. Um, it's just one little, about four or five words. Just my imagination running away with me. Listen, I was in cosmetology one day cosmetology class one of my fellow students had gotten it in her mind this is piggybacking off of the casting down imagination and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ now listen she sat there and this lady was getting was packing her stuff getting ready to go and I asked her, I said, where are you going? I said, class isn't over yet. Are you sick? Are you okay? And she said, I'm, I'm going to drop the class. And I said, why? And she, now this is, imagine, this is the station. I'm using this as a box so you can picture what she's doing. This is what I'm seeing. She's leaning forward like this, pulling her stuff out and packing because she's hiding her face, she's bawling her eyes out. Now remember I talked about the pit that we dig ourselves into or we fall into, then it's a lot harder to get out. I literally watched Satan take her down a spiral. It was the most, it was spiritual. It was demonic. It, it was really insightful. I was like, wow, look at what our emotions and our imaginations can do. All right, listen to this. <laughs> she sits here. She was really hurting. I'm not laughing at her. This lady was hurting. She was broken. And I'm asking her, well, what happened? Why would you want to just quit like that? We worked so hard doing our homework together, studying. What's going on? And she says, She's, I'm just paraphrasing, you know, because that was like 25, 30 years ago. But she's about 30 years old. She's sitting up here talking about, I know that Mrs. So-and-so, the teacher, doesn't like me. <laughs> I'm fighting the urge to laugh because I know Mrs. So-and-so ain't even thinking about her. Okay, so, but I'm feeling for her but it just sounded ludicrous so I said well why would you think that and she starts snowballing and I was sitting there and she looked at me and when she looked at me she looked at me really funny and I know the other day when I went to say hi to her she looked at me and she didn't say anything and then another day I said something and she ignored me and then she looked really irritated when I came into the classroom. And it, I'm telling you this thing snowball. It was amazing to watch. I felt like Sigmund Freud, you know, doing a psychological analysis. Whoa, Nellie. So I'm tripping off of this overreaction over an imagination, an imaginary nothing. Anyway. So that's what she's doing. She's going off. She's having, I mean, she is just basically losing it. She is all the way down at the bottom of her sand, quicksand, her mud pit that I was talking about in the other video. If you were listening, you remember. Now, I have to pray while she's talking in my spirit and under my breath, I'm mumbling so she can't hear me. Excuse me. So she can't hear me. I'm saying, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, Satan. Stop tormenting this lady. I called her name. In the name of Jesus, I command you to get up off of her. Leave her alone. I'm going on and on. So anyway, I start talking now. And I'm asking God, bring peace to this situation. Help her understand. And 
I said, you know, so-and-so, uh, there is a scripture that says if you think somebody has anything against you, just go to them. You probably find out there's nothing to it. <gasps> oh, I know, I know. I'm like, oh, boy. So, anyway, she gets quiet now. So she did at least get quiet. And she's just packing her stuff. But she's steadily crying, packing and crying and packing. As soon as I saw the teacher, the particular teacher she was talking to, because we had four that day, as soon as I saw that teacher, I said, Mrs. So-and-so, would you come here for a minute? And she's looking at me like, <laughs> this was done to me, so I know it works like a charm. I said, uh, Maria has her feelings hurt. <gasps> Didn't mean to say her name. I got to block that out. Okay. So-and-so has her feelings hurt. So I would like for you to talk to her. She's really hurting. She's about to go home and drop the class. And she goes over to her and she says, so-and-so, what's wrong? And she, I just thought you didn't like me. She just went on and on and on. I know, I know this lady was looking at her like, where did you get that from? <laughs> But see, this is what happens. When we are already damaged, we are, I mean, I went through it. I did it at church. I almost walked out of the church because I thought somebody didn't like me all of a sudden. I am that important. Not. Okay. So, but I'm tripping and I know what it's like to trip and it hurts. Oh my goodness. It hurts like it's the real deal. So here she is. She's self-conscious, she's insecure like I was, and she is going down the spiral, getting locked down in the pit, and she can't get out. When the teacher gets through talking to her, she calms down, and now she's wiping her eyes, and she's putting her stuff back in, and she stayed. She passed the class, got her cosmetology license. <laughs> But you see what I mean? What we do, we just run. We turn tail and run off of her. Just my imagination. Come on, y'all. You already know you're oversensitive. I knew I was. You already know. I mean, you, you just know that you got some issues going on. You cannot let your issues get in the driver's seat. They will take you every which way but loose. I mean, they will take you to, to the loony bin if you let them. Casting down every imagination. Take every thought into captivity. No, I'm not going to dwell on that nonsense. Quit tripping. Talk to yourself some sense into yourself pray try that kind of works you know take that thing to God Lord what's really going on <laughs> yeah anyway I hope that helps you because a lot of times we make a messy situation out of a bunch of hot air Satan blows a, a he blows a bubble, he, he breaks wind in your face, and you think it's the end of the world. <laughs>